everybody, it's Mariana with Three Peaks Classroom. If you are new to my channel, hello and welcome. I'm a teacher here in Alberta, Canada, and I love to make helpful YouTube videos for other teachers just like you. In today's video, I wanna talk about all of the different books that I have to talk about the Grade 3 Science Unit, Energy, and more specifically, we're talking about forces and motion. So similar to the previous video that I did where I talked about books that you can use in your classroom for matter and changes of states, uh, with both read aloud like picture books and also informational books. I'm going to do the same thing here with the second unit, which is energy in grade three science. Now I got all of these books from the local library. None of these are my own personal copy. I borrowed all of these books and I borrowed. I borrowed 16 books from the library all on this topic and it was really simple. Once you have a library card, you go in and you type in simple machines or motion or pulleys or whatever. You see the book, you see um, if it's available and then you put it on hold and you can have them all shipped to one location. And then that way you don't even have to go in you to search for them. You just go in and grab the books and scan them out and you're done. So it's actually a really streamlined process. Those of you that have never borrowed books from the library before, I highly recommend that you do it for your classroom because it has been a truly big lifesaver. So we're gonna get started. I'm gonna start off with these four read aloud stories that you could read to your students. They're not the same kind of read aloud like I had in the matter unit where it was like a follow a cloud or follow a water droplet and it's literally like, it's written like a story. These are informational books, but written in a way that you could read them to your class as if it was a picture book. So. The first one I have here is Simple Machines by DJ Ward. I love this Let's Read and Find Out series. I recommended this series in my previous video as well, but I love their illustrations and I love the way that they um, write things out. So it starts off by saying, have you ever had to move something really heavy? How did you do it? Hmm. And then it, again, it invites the kids to think about how these simple machines can really help them in their lives. And I just love the illustrations in here. It would be a really fun story to read aloud to kids and it talks about, it introduces them to the six simple machines. So this is for sure, without a doubt, the very first book that I would grab to read about and introduce students to the simple machines part of your um, energy unit in grade three science. So it goes through every single individual simple machine. So again, Simple Machines by DJ Ward, illustrated by Mike Lowry. That's the first one. This next one is actually super cute. And it, out of all of these books, this one is written the most like a read aloud. So how do seesaws go up and down a book about simple machines? But it's really cute. It says, how do you make a seesaw go up and down? Do you and your friends take turns holding the balloons so that you can float? No, of course not. No way. Balloons. A seesaw is actually an example of a lever. And then it goes, the next one is, or there's one about a snake. Hold on, let me find that page. Oh yeah. How do you make, how do you raise a flag up on a flagpole? Do you play music to a snake so that the snake slides it up to the top of the pole? No, you use a pulley system, right? Flagpoles use simple machines called a fixed pulley. So this book is written more in a, like a read aloud style. So I really like that one. Uh, so how do seesaws go up and down? A book about simple machines written by Jennifer Shand. There you go. So there's another book you can use in your classroom. Another one here, simple machines, wheels, levers, and pulleys. The um, the illustrations in here are like a read aloud kind. Machines make work easier. Look in a mirror and smile. You are looking at a whole set of simple machines, a whole set of wedges. A wedge is thin at one end and wide at the other. It's a simple machine that helps break things apart. So it has really good simple examples in here. Um, but again, the illustrations are like a read aloud kind. So. This is called Simple Machines, Wheels, Levers, and Pulleys by David A. Adler. That's another option you can have in the classroom. And the last book that I have that's kind of written in like a picture read aloud uh, way is called Motion, Push and Pull, Fast and Slow. And so the very first part of the grade three um, energy unit talks about pushing and pulling and what are the differences between those. And so again, this book does a really good job of explaining that. Uh, again, the illustrations and the way that it's written, it's not a story, but it lends itself to a read aloud format. So changing places, you run to catch the school bus, the school bus rolls down the road, tree branches sway in the breeze, an airplane flies up into the sky. Anything that goes from one place to another is in motion. And then there's fun facts on the bottom. So again, it's kind of like a read aloud, especially the way that it's drawn is uh, 
is easy to read to the students to introduce them to a topic. So I would pull this book out when I'm introducing the unit because the very first section in my grade three energy uh, resource, the workbook, talks about motion, talks about pushing and pulling. So uh, I would take this book out and I would read it to the kids first and then we would sit down and we would open up our workbooks and we will work on those pages. So those are the first four books that I would recommend. Definitely, I would grab these for your energy unit. The next ones I have here are three books that are kind of like inviting kids to um, explore hands-on with the materials. And so it kind of invites them to do little mini science experiments. So the first one is called Boom Science Forces by Georgia Amson Bradshaw. Forces make things fall, slow down, speed up, move and stop and find out how. So this is more of an informational book. It's definitely not a read aloud. But what's fun about this book is that, so it explains to the kids what is a force, forces are in action, but it invites them to you to make fun little science experiments. And so this is a really fun book that you can pull out. Um, for example, if you're doing daily five in language arts and you want to do a station where kids are reading to somebody and you wanna pull out science books, this is a great way to incorporate science books based on your unit and have them explore these concepts as well. So this one, again, Boom Science Forces by Georgia Amson Bradshaw. And the next two books are kind of from a similar lineup. I only grabbed two, but I'm sure there's more. This one is called Screws in My Makerspace, and this is called Wedges in My Makerspace. Again, similar idea where it's written in, It's it, there's a lot of text, so it's written in a way for kids to read it, to get information, but then it invites them to do a little experiments. So if you want to make a wedge, you need some cardboard and it shows you how to make it. So I liked that book for that reason. It invites kids to do these science experiments. Um, wedges that stop. Let's see. There's, um, yep. Yeah, so there's another, there's more activities that the kids can do. So there's a whole series here that kids can have. So inclined planes in my makerspace, levers, pulleys, screws, wedges, and wheels in my axles, wheels and axles. I only grabbed two just so that I could have them handy to talk to you guys. So wedges in my makerspace by Tim Miller and Rebecca Sojourner. Sojourner? I'm not sure how to pronounce that. There you go. But if you wanted to grab these to have in your classroom for the kids to look at, I would I would use these as like inspirational books. So those are those three here. And then I have my can, uh, my pile of books here. Take these ones too. My pile of books that I would use purely for informational purposes. So if kids need to look something up, if they need to find some information, in addition to using their laptops, I also want kids to practice looking and reading and finding information in a book. So these two, again, from the same series, pulleys are machines, levers are machines, written by Douglas Bender. And what I love about this book is that the print is large. Oftentimes, these informational books, the print is very small and hard to read. But these are fantastic readers, especially for like my kiddos that are learning English. It turns on a fulcrum and then fulcrum is highlighted and it gives them an arrow. I just very, very well designed books. The tab on a can pop is a small lever. You know, a seesaw is a big lever. So I just I love the way that this is. Um, I love the images. I love the text. I love that it's big and bold. Same thing with pulleys in this whole series written the same format so I'll just pull it up like that so simple machines pulleys are machines levers are machines written by Douglas Bender uh, by Crabtree Roots so if you're looking to add those ones I would definitely grab those for informational resource type books in the classroom then I just have a bunch of random books here none of them are part of a series or a set so I'll just show them to you so this one's motion zoom in on uh, Science Concepts by Andrea Rivera. So I'll just give you guys a little snippet. Again, nice big text with highlighted words. Technology, acceleration, engineering, parachuting, art, math. So this is all about motion. So not directly related to any of your concepts, but if you want another resource that talks about um, uh, energy 
in science or like physics, this would be a resource that you could use. But if you are limited on time or whatever, and you don't want to necessarily go out of the way to pick up this book, this would be okay one to skip. But I just don't want to show it to you because I liked the big bold text in that one. You wouldn't want to live without simple machines. And I love that. So this book is written by Anne Rooney, illustrated by Mark Bergen. And it is a scholastic book, which is handy. What I like about this book is that it gives you a timeline of simple machines. It kind of goes into the history of how simple machines have developed. So I really like that. And it goes into present day. Like we got like 3D printers and stuff like that. So uh, what is a simple machine? What I don't like about this book is that the print is smaller and it's very text heavy. So for those kids that are kind of like learning to read, it's not, not the best book to use, but I love the imagery. I love the illustrations and I love that, that it goes into the history of simple machines as well. And that simple machines have existed for ages and ages, right? So another fun book that you can use in your classroom. I would use this one in addition to these experiment ones. I would use these in my classroom during my daily five rotations, I would have students look at these books um, like as references and for enjoyment. Then I've got four more here. This one is Wheel and Axles, Simple Machines, a fast track book. Um, there's no author listed here. Oh, Nancy Dickman. There's a whole range in this uh, series as well. So levers, pulleys, ramps, screws, and wedges. Lots of books to choose from. Um, really nice imagery. Really nice labeling of the pictures. Again, I'm thinking with my like English language learners on the top of my brain. Um, I just really like how they're... It's not too much information. It's not overwhelming. Like my students can definitely read this chunk and get an idea of what they're talking about. And same thing here. Read this chunk. Wow, like little blurbs. Um, I can also use this book during like a guided reading session when you're talking about content uh, text or sorry, non-fictional text features. Um, you can use this as well so that you can pull out these like little blurbs and stuff. So anyways, I think this would be a great book to add to your classroom as well. And again, there's a whole series of books um, written by the same author. So that one, three more. Let's find pulleys. This is a fun book that... Um, finds pulleys in everyday life. So that's really fun. So we're talking about flagpoles. We're talking about cranes. And so it just gives really real life examples and it's not a lot of text. So it's a great like picture book, great reference book, great for students that are learning English. They don't need to do a lot of reading, but they can recognize all the different examples of pulleys. You know, so if there's an assignment where it says, you know, can you find some everyday examples of pulleys in your classroom? you know, there or in your world, I should say, then you would have great examples here. Of course, there is a whole series here. So let's find inclined planes, levers, pulleys, screws, wedges, wheels, and axles. There's a whole series here as well. So the title is Let's Find Pulleys and the author is Wiley Blevins. There you go. So I would highly recommend this one uh, just simply because there's very shortened amount of text, beautiful, beautiful real life photographs and Really easy for the kids to understand real life, everyday concepts of simple machines. Two more books. Here we go. This one, My Word of Science, Simple Machines. If I remember correctly, this one was written in very student friendly, very easy to understand language. Yeah, so again, nice big text, really simple, not overwhelming at all. Uh, simple images as well. Very easy. This is another book that I would recommend, um, especially for those kids that are learning English. I keep repeating myself, but this is a good example. So this one is all about simple machines. So we're talking pulleys. We're talking inclined planes. We're talking, oh, it says, can you find an inclined plane in your playground? Wedges, real simple, real simple introduction to sim uh, simple machines in the classroom as well. And last one, this one is put screws to the test. And yes, this is part of a series. There are more here. Put inclined planes to the test, put levers to the test, put pulleys to the test. So I just grabbed one because I don't need the whole entire series. I just want to see how this book looked like. A little bit more on the text, but not too crazy. The kids should be able to read this in grade three or they should be able to um, at least reference it. So another good example. And this is another uh, introduction to screws. So we're talking about jar lids and things like that. So put screws to the test by Sally M. Walker and Roseanne Feldman. There's the authors. So all in all, there's one book that I didn't really recommend. 
This one's called Explore Simple Machines. 25 great projects, but it's like pretty, pretty advanced. And this is a book that if it was in the school library and could, kids could check out, then I would recommend this book. But because if you are borrowing this from the city library, I wouldn't recommend that it goes home, obviously, with a kid because they could lose it and then you'll be the one that's charged. So this is one that I didn't recommend, but I didn't know it until I borrowed it. But if you had a personal copy and you wanted to lend it out to students, or if you have a, a school library and you want to buy this for the school library, or if the school wants to buy it, then this would be a great example for the kids to take home. So all in all, how many did I recommend here? So four, seven, oops, 15 books, if I counted correctly, 15 books that you can use in your classroom to help you teach the energy unit in grade three science here in Alberta or anywhere in the world. If you were talking about simple machines and force and uh, like forces in motion, these are all fantastic titles that you could use in your own classrooms. I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. I will be coming out with more episodes talking about uh, earth systems, living systems, and computer science as well, book recommendations in all of those units. So stay tuned for that. If you haven't already subscribed, you might want to consider subscribing so that you don't miss any episodes that I come out in the future. Also, P.S., a quick shout out to my colleague who is letting me film in her classroom. You guys know that I am an EAL support teacher, so I don't have my own personal classroom. Um, I have an office, which I filmed a video about my uh, office space and the activities that I do. So I'll be putting that out soon. Uh, but yeah, special thanks to my friend here who let me uh, film in her classroom. So thank you very much, everybody, for watching. I hope you guys are having a great day and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.